a house with a door. One, two, three, four. Ready to play? What's the day? It's Wednesday. Hello. Do you ever listen to the noises that the things around you make? Like this drawer. What sort of noise does it make? Swish, 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 and a bump. Swishing and a bumping noise. There's something in here as well. A tin. What noise does this make? It's kind of a clanking noise, isn't it? I think there's something in here. Yes, paper clips. Metal paper clips. That's what makes the clanking sounds. Anything else? Paper. A rustling sound. What about these? Keys. What sort of noise do keys make? Jangle, 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 jangle. Sort of a jangling noise, isn't it? Could be a bit like bells. Bells ringing, do you think? Ding dong, ding dong, ding dong, ding dong. What else is there? Ah, a pencil sharpener. What noise do you think this will make? Do you think? Where, where, where? Creech, 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 crunch, crunch, crunch. Anything else? Ah, what about this? It's not making any noise yet, this clock. But if I wind it up, have a listen to the noise that it makes. Clocks make very peaceful sounds. She makes a noise too. Do you know what it's called? It's called a typewriter. I'll show you how it works. If I take this top off, you can have a look inside. There's a different knob to press, which prints each letter of the alphabet onto the paper. Put this back in here. Now, I have a shopping list to finish. Where was I? Ah, yes. I need some S-O-A-P. Soup. It's very noisy, isn't it? Ba, ba, black sheep, have you any wool? Yes, sir, yes, sir, three bags full. There's a piece of music called the typewriter song. It's very fast and you need lots of fingers for it, but I can only use two. Let's see if I can keep a time for the music. and see if you know it.
with a star, with a whistle, or a violin, with a pop, 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 with the crackle of a harp, or the booming of a big voice drum. Do the branches swing in the sun, or the whistling reed from the busy means, sing a song that we love so long? Why don't you pretend you've got a dial phone to play? Have a go. Let's see what other instruments we've got to play. Oh, I've got a drum, a big drum. Have a listen. Don't need to sound that. And I've got a gong, big gong. Have a listen. Good sound. Okay, so when you hear the drum, hit the drum. And when you hear the gong, hit the gong. And when you hear the xylophone, give it a good play. Are you ready? What's first? drum and a little drum and a long xylophone and a big round gong a gong different musical instruments and I give them eyes, tiny eyes, and faces, and patterns, and long tails fluttering and crossing over each other. What could they be? Flying high in the sky, crossing and flying in the wind. The kites flying in the sky. And we can see them today through the window. All different shapes and all different sizes. And they're being flown by people in a country called China. And we can see that if we look through, through the square window. Are those birds or are they kites? The kites. A lot of people come to see the kites fly. You need a bit of wind to fly a kite. A piece of string is on one end. You hold the other bit and away it flies into the air. There's one with a very long tail. I wonder if that one will fly.
Sasha. There you are, little bird. What kind of shop would you like it to be? A grocer's. A grocery shop? Yes. He likes that idea. I've got some old boxes here. That one's a good one, isn't it? It's already got shelves in it. Pop that there. And I've got some smaller boxes too. That can balance in it. I think I'll put some jars in it too. And something on the top. Let's see if this will stay. already slot in there. We need a counter though. Yeah. And we also need a cash register to cash the money. Yes, that looks good. And we could have little jars in there to put the sweets in. But I think it needs something here. This is something you could do, couldn't you? You could make a shop at home. Got some sugar lumps here. And I think I'll put that in there, like that. It needs a front on it. I've got a box right here. That could look like a window. What's that little bit? The window's dirty. I'll clean it so people can see in. There you are, little Ted. Now your window's clean. What can you see through it? What can you see? Oh, the play school clock. What time do you think it saves? We'll give you a clue. It's a time that most shops open. Have another look. The big hand is facing upwards which means it's something o'clock. And the short hand is on a number. Do you know what number that is? Nine. So it's nine o'clock. Have a look underneath. It's a swing and a roundabout. <laughs> for today's story. It's about a man named Mr. Vitelli. He's an Italian, but he left his country, Italy, a long time ago to come live in this country. Well, Mr. Vitelli had a sweet shop. This is a here, and he had his name painted on the front of the shop. Vitelli's. Well, on either side was a large open area. It was a park filled with swings and roundabouts. The kids loved to play in the park and they'd come and pop into Mr. Patelli's shop with their pocket money and buy sweets. Mr. Patelli loved customers, especially if they stayed for a chat. Well, one day, men came along, along and closed the park. They took away the swings and the roundabout. And then they came with lorries and diggers and they built a big building right next to Mr. Vitelli's shop. They built it higher and higher and higher. It was an office building and it made Mr. Vitelli's shop look very small indeed. On the other side of the shop, they built a supermarket. A supermarket is a big shop where you can buy lots of different things. Instead of going to the bakers for bread, and the butchers for meat, and the fishmongers for fish. You can go to the supermarket and get all of these things all together. Mr. Patelli wasn't happy about this, because no one went to a shop. People in the streets didn't even pop in, because they didn't notice Mr. Patelli's shop sandwiched in between these huge buildings. Well, the day came when Mr. Patelli didn't have one single customer all day, and he said to himself, Oh, mamma mia, I'm going to have to close my shop and go back to Italy. So he gathered up all the sweets he had left 
into a big cardboard box and took them to some children who used to play by the park. When he got back, it was getting a bit dark, and the office block and supermarket looked a bit dark and empty, while Mr Patelli was just about to lock his door for the very last time when a man came running up to him and said, Oh, excuse me, Mr Patelli, do you have anything to eat? I've been working in the office for hours. I'm working tonight, and I haven't had anything. I'm starving. There is nothing around here to buy. Could you give me something? Mr Patelli said, Well... I don't have anything. Wait, I'll make you a pizza. Italians are really good at making pizzas. The bread base with cheese and tomato and toppings and seasonings on it. The man loved the pizza so much that he asked if he could come back another time to have another one. And Mr. Patelli said, but of course, come back any time. That gave Mr. Patelli an idea. And he said to himself, I don't have to close my shop. I'll make it into a restaurant. And that's exactly what he did. The next morning, he went out and bought tables and chairs and he put them on the pavement outside the shop. He then bought a new blind for his window and he put some lights around it. Well, Mr Patelli's shop was so successful that people came from all over town to have one of his pizzas. Every evening, when the office block and super supermarket were closing the doors, Mr. Batelli would open his door, switch on his lights, and serve his customers. It's time for us to go now. Perhaps you'd like to listen to the noises around you. You could see if they remind you of any musical instruments. Or you could make a shop out of bits and pieces. Goodbye, till tomorrow. Yeah!